Brian Johnson, I've made two videos about him. First, just looking at his whole protocol, and then the second one looking at his uh, blueprint stack, the supplements that he sells. Overall, I've been pretty skeptical, right? It's just an anecdote. It's just one person, but I do appreciate some of the reasoning behind it, and I do like that he's vegan. Point is, there's this new video, Best Protein Sources for Vegans, according to Brian Johnson. I'm interested because, if I remember correctly, his diet was overall pretty good. I mean, it was weird. Like, I see this thumbnail up here from Saustache uh, trying his lunch. Like, what? What? Not the most appetizing looking stuff, but if I remember correctly, really healthy. We got to talk about protein shakes. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion? Yeah, so I consume 120 grams of protein per day, thereabouts. And that is enough for me to be top 1% optimal in muscle mass and cardiovascular ability and metabolic health. It is very common to think you need 150, 200, 250. It's not required. So um, I've, I've demonstrated that uh, you can be reasonable on the protein intake, have optimal biomarkers across the board. Uh, if like my son consumes more protein than that because he's trying to bulk up and he's also 19. So there are exceptions to this, but generally speaking, a lot of people over consume protein. Based on his own personal anecdote. What did I say about anecdotes? Like this is... Oh, it's so dumb because he is correct. Like the 250, 200 is very likely overboard. And of course, most people are getting this from animal products as well, which is very likely not good for you. My favorite protein guide is this one, actually. It's from examine.com and they even have a calculator. They say your optimal daily protein intake depends on your weight, goal, and level of physical activity from 1.2 grams per kilogram if you're sedentary all the way up to 2.7 grams per kilogram for serious athletes in certain contexts. So obviously he's not a serious athlete working out an hour a day is not seriously athletic, which he did concede, right? He said his son is trying to bulk up, so he's going to need more protein. How much do you think he weighs? I'm just gonna say 180. I don't know. How much do men weigh? I have no idea. <laughs> no, he's not pregnant or lactating. 180, healthy weight, maintenance. Oh, okay, I had that on kilogram. <laughs> okay, if we change it to pound, 180 pounds, 98 grams, at least 98 grams per day. If you want to gain muscle, 131, which he said that's about what he's consuming, 120 to 130. Again, I don't know if he actually weighs 180. I have no idea. I bet he has that. He has this blueprint thing, right? Oh, the site's all like different now. It doesn't have all the, it doesn't have all the things. Well, it looks like here someone says 174. He had a DEXA scan four months ago, 174. So yeah, around 180 probably. Hey, maybe I do know what men weigh. <laughs> Point is, he's right. Most men aren't going to need 200, 250 grams of protein, but he's not right because of his own personal experience. His own personal experience jives with the research we have on protein. Can we break down this protein situation a little more? You're vegan. I am. Uh, it's an assumption that one can't get the protein requirements hit through a vegan diet. Yeah. I'd assume that you argue against that point. Yeah. So I, I am vegan. I do caloric restriction, which means I consume less than the recommended daily allowance. I, I consume 2,250 calories a day. I exercise for one hour a day, um, and I have a low protein intake, you know, according to cultural norms of 120, 130. And so most people say with that profile, I would be weak. I would be uh, not able to compete athletically. But actually, my muscle and body fat are top 1% optimal, and my cardiovascular ability, top 1.5% of 18-year-olds. So my biomarkers say it's you know top 1% optimal. So it's an example that I've defied all cultural norms, and I'm still a top performer. Again, he seems very nice and earnest, but I hate this. Even if someone is right, again, what he's saying is correct, but to base it on his own personal experience is just terrible. We're just encouraging people to view this as a way to gain knowledge, you know, how to acquire information. Just listen to someone who has the results you want. Just listen to someone who says they're going to live forever. Like, that's not how science works. The correct response would be, we have study after study that compares 
soy protein, even pea protein, I think some studies, to whey protein, and they're basically the same in terms of performance. As long as you are getting enough protein and getting enough of your essential amino acids, there should not be any difference between animal protein and plant protein. And we know that not because of Brian Johnson and his blueprint bullshit, but because of research, decades of research. It's just very annoying that people like this are the ones who are turned to as experts. It promotes poor scientific literacy. And ultimately, it's confusing to people because, okay, you can listen to Brian Johnson or you can listen to whatever carnivore bro who also looks super fit and jacked and seems healthy. And he's saying, no, 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 vegan is terrible for you. Plants are terrible for you. And he knows that because of his own experience. Well, whose experience is better? How are you supposed to grade these? What's to stop people from just picking a new person every week? You know, whoever is the most convincing to them. It's just a terrible way to promote nutrition. Speak about protein intake based requirements or food-based requirements than you. Wait, what? I don't think there's anyone more qualified to speak about what did I just say? requirements or food-based requirements than you because of your daily experimentation and your daily download of data from your own body. That would have been a perfect opportunity for Brian to say no, but of course he's not going to do that because in order to promote this, he has to come across as an, as an expert right? Like, oh, it's so frustrating. Yep. So uh, I'll caveat and say, of course, like the advice varies according to male, female, it varies according to age. So these are just general approximations. But I, what I meant to say is like the, we follow science and we follow data. Right. And so what I'm trying to say is don't follow cultural norms, mm. follow the data. So get yourself measured. Okay. You don't have to get yourself measured. I'm not sure what he means there to find out what, how much protein you need. <laughs> no, you don't need to go to see a doctor to find out how much protein you need. Again, I think examine.com's uh, calculator is a good place to start. I get my protein sources from lentils, uh, from pea protein, hemp protein. Uh, you know, uh, those are primarily the, the major ones. Gotcha. Lentils? Pea proteins and, and hemp. hemp proteins. Yeah. So you do a couple of protein shakes every day? I have, yeah. Two a day. Two a day. Yeah. And the rest is from lentils. Yeah. So this is chickpeas, black lentils. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do some beans. Beans. Yeah. This is primarily what we eat in India. Yeah. Because we have mostly a vegetarian population. Exactly. Okay. I'm not sure why that's the best protein sources. What? Just because that's what he eats? Come on. This is so goofy. And all the comments are just... Wow, Brian, this is amazing. It sucks because on the one hand, like he's promoting veganism, really, you know, and like that's terrific, but it can't be at the expense of good public health communication. It can't be at the expense of science communication. I just put out my big review of How Not to Die, and that's a perfect example of that, I think. Yes, it promotes a plant-based ultimately vegan diet, but it does so at the expense of science. It, it promotes poor scientific literacy. So it's just not something I can get behind. And same here. I just, I can't support something like this. So anyway, that's the video. Another short one, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe. And thank you to all of my supporters here on YouTube and on Patreon, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two videos a month just for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and then a controversial I'm going to post the controversial for October very soon. And that's it for me. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. Is it jive or jibe? Why can I never remember that? Okay, everyone's doing this. Jive versus jibe versus gibe? We hope you jibe with our advice. Oh, it's jibe. Damn it. I thought it was jive because jive, like, like dancing, like you're you're jiving? Isn't that a thing? The use of jive as a variant of jibe seems to have increased each decade since the 1940s. May often be found in reputable and edited sources today. Oh my god, we've got the Washington Post, Toronto Star. Okay, I'm good. <laughs>